To Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation. All praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, Jesus, Lord and Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the have mercy on us, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, 
I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John, the ba for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the clap your hands shout to God with cries of gladness for the Lord the most high the awesome is the great king over all the earth God mounts his throne to shouts of joy a blare of trumpets for the Lord his throne amid shouts of joy the Lord amid trumpets blast sing praise to God sing praise sing praise to our King sing praise sing praise God mounts his throne to shouts of joy a blare of trumpets for the Lord For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is 
the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I've seen people returning to Mass this week, a lot of uh, parishioners have been asking me if I've had an opportunity to fish. And um, a week and a half ago, in fact, I did have an opportunity to go fishing, and I wanted to share a little story from that. It's not like that glorious of an interesting, or glorious or interesting of a story, but. Um, I was fishing with Brother Adam, who's the campus minister of the University of Central Florida, the Catholic campus ministry there. And uh, it was late in the evening, and Brother Adam was fishing a lure that like catches a whole lot of fish, and I had chosen to go for the home run. So I had on what's known as a jig, and a big jig, in fact. And jigs are great bass lures, but they're not great at catching small bass. I had this like giant, bushy lure with all of these appendages hanging off of it, and this thing was going to catch a monster. So, like, you know, it's like playing the lotto, you know? And when you buy that lotto ticket, you don't ever really think that you're going to win. And I'm sitting there, and I just keep chucking this thing, and, and you do it so much that it's really hard to have confidence. And then there was this moment, I had gotten it caught in a bush, and we took the trolling motor and we took the boat over there, and I yanked it out of the bush, and it hit the water, and all of a sudden this huge bass explodes on it, um, and I just kind of like yanked up, didn't do a good job of setting the hook, wasn't ready, 
at all for this, and suddenly there's this monster bass, and both me and Brother Adam like caught a glimpse of her. And I say her because the, bi the big ones like that, they're all like female, okay? And then just like that, like I had pulled her, pulled her up out of the water, she threw the hook because I hadn't set the hook properly, and it was over. And I was sitting there like this. Like adrenaline had like completely dumped into me. And like both of us, I mean, we were kind of like speechless in the moment as to what just happened, you know. And uh, Brother Adam, he actually started trying to like minister to me, you know, because he knew that I wanted to catch a 10-pound bass. And so he's like, I don't, I don't think she was 10 pounds. I don't think she was 10 pounds. Like, maybe she wasn't really that big. Because we had, I mean, we both just saw this sight, and I haven't been able to get that sight out of my mind, you know? But, like, I was actually happy for the rest of the evening. For, like, just having caught a glimpse of her. And the other thing is, I also know where she lives, you know? And I plan on meeting her again one day, you know? But it was awesome, and you know, I share that story with you in fun, but like that, that thrill, and then all of a sudden everything became real, like everything shifted in me in that moment. You know, like this lore that, you know, like I, I was only like halfway believing in, I'm just like convincing myself to keep throwing this thing, all of a sudden everything changed after that, of course. Of course I'm throwing at like every spot around there now, and now every cast I think I'm gonna catch a giant fish. Um, but everything had become like real. Everything had come to life in that moment. And I think it's pertinent for us to kind of reflect on, when it comes to the ascension, that's, that's what God desires for us on this day, for everything to come to life for everything to become real, for us to see that which all of this has been leading towards, and for us to desire it and taste it. I used to have a lot of trouble with this mystery, the mystery of the ascension, because um, whenever I pray the rosary, because it was such like an intangible thing, you know, Jesus ride, literally riding clouds, you know? And, like, what do I do with that theologically? And then the fruit of the mystery is, is hope. You know, and I would wonder, like, how, how does that give me hope? Shouldn't I just be thinking about the resurrection? And yet I knew that there was, like, something in the resurrection that uh, I was called to see more deeply. And I, I prayed with it a lot. And last year, like, it was really good, actually, when I was praying with it. Uh, I started, I felt like, I understood it a lot more. The Ascension, if you wanted to compare it to any other Catholic feast day in which it's probably the most similar, it's most similar to Christmas. All right? And the reason for that is, like Christmas, we celebrate the divine and the human coming together in Jesus, united in one person, in the life of one man body of Jesus, God and man, Christmas. And today, as Jesus ascends into heaven, we don't always think about this reality, but like, it's his body that ascends into heaven. The same body that the disciples ate with, drank with, the same body both before and after the resurrection, the same like one who had been coming to them and he'd felt that the disciples had felt the wounds. That body is in heaven. And now forever, eternally, it's part of who God is. In heaven, right now, a human body, fully alive. And it's revealing our destiny. Because Jesus took on, like, our humanity. And so, like, part of us, part of us has been taken up. That's hope.
This is from the Office of Readings uh, for the Ascension. This is from a sermon by uh, St. Saint, Saint Augustine. Today our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Let our hearts ascend with him. Listen to the words of the Apostle. If you have risen with Christ, set your hearts on the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Seek the things that are above, not the things that are on earth. For just as he remained with us after his ascension, we too are already in heaven with him. Even though what is promised us has not yet been fulfilled in our bodies. Part of us has been taken up. Christ is now exalted above the heavens, but he still suffers on earth all the pain that we, the members of his body, have to bear. He showed this when he cried out from above, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And when he said, I was hungry and you gave me no food. Why do we on earth not strive to find rest with him in heaven even now? through the faith, hope, and love that unites us to Him. While in heaven, He is also with us, and while, we, and while on earth, we are with Him. He is here with us by His divinity, His power, and His love. We cannot be in heaven as He is on earth by divinity, but in Him, we can be there by love. So Augustine is trying to like help us to like grasp in a new way that like already and not yet experience of the kingdom that um, as we pray we're brought there and that like our life is already intermingled with the kingdom like as we come to mass we experience the kingdom If there's one grace that coronavirus um, that could have possibly come from everything we've been through with coronavirus, we, me, both me and Father Glenn have mentioned it like several times throughout this time. It's uh, that we suddenly like realize the really real, realize what's truly important. Like all of us have had this opportunity to kind of rethink how we look at life are we willing to like have we entered into uh, l this idea that like living in this reality there's someone at daily mass this week uh, she came up to me after mass and she says so she's like oh i'm so sick of this father i'm so sick of this and the social distancing and everything and and she and you know she said we weren't made to live like this we weren't made to live like this. And it kept kind of ringing in my head, you know. No, we weren't. And then maybe during this time, we've all like, started to either remember or realize in a deep, deeper way how we were meant to live. Living our faith fully. Living out our mission living for heaven. Uh, before I uh, entered seminary, I was, I was the position that uh, Brother Adam was in campus ministry. I was the associate campus, or I was the associate campus minister there. Um, and I've maintained contact with a lot of my former students. And one of them, uh, I remember she contacted me when she was in med school She's a doctor now, and uh, I remember this conversation this week. Uh, she had called me looking for counsel, and one of the things uh, she was discerning was what area of medicine she should go into. And one of the options on the table was pediatrics. And she explained to me that one of the reasons that she liked that field is all the doctors and nurses she had met seemed different than the doctors in other fields she had seen. And they were all such caring and happy people. But 
her one concern before going into that field was one of the things that her professor told her was that peop the people who make the best pediatricians are the ones that don't like kids. Because that allows them to somewhat like detach themselves from what they're doing and it's able to help them make tough decisions such as putting a child on a feeding tube or things of that nature. And I, as I heard her expressing this to me, she like laughed out loud when she heard kind of like the bluntness of my response because I was just like, I honestly think that's the worst advice I've ever heard in my life. She was like, really, why? And I'm like, become a pediatrician and you don't like kids? It's, I, I, like I didn't even know how to articulate what was wrong with that, but that, that was like such a worldly way of thinking. The number one source of job dissatisfaction in any field, in any field, is not believing in what you're doing and not thinking that what you're doing is important. I mean, that like money comes at like number four on that list. And uh, the other two on a uh, list that I've seen, they all deal with being appreciated by your boss or getting along with your coworkers or things like that. But number one, like hands down, is living for something, meaning, mission. We'll never be happy if we're living out of some, some sort of selfishness, if we're living out of an attempt to make like money, if that's all there is. There's emptiness there. True happiness is found in Christ. Living out our mission. Living for the kingdom. Living our faith. Second reading. We receive the fullness of the one who fills things in every way. It's the only thing that truly satisfies we reflected during this time on um, what our lives are supposed to look like, living for the kingdom. Our English word for martyr comes from the Greek word for witness. I thought that was profound as Christ calls us to be witnesses of all of these things. Martyrs for all of these things. Living our life for this. God calls us to live our life for this. Do we talk to people about the gospel? When's the last time you shared your faith with someone? Something good for all of us to consider. Do we believe that people really need to hear about the kingdom? And so we come to them and we preach it to them, not out of like arrogance and that we have found the truth and they haven't. Do we preach it to them out of love for them? Because we really love, for, love them and we really want them to experience the beauty and awesomeness of Christ and how that's what life is all about. Lord, help us today. And as we you know, finish out this Easter season, as we contemplate your kingdom more and more to um, truly embrace it with all of our hearts as the really real, as the life that you've called us into. Fill us with hope. Give us faith in, that, uh, in our eternal destiny, that that is truly where you're leading us, and um, confidence that you're with us as we reach out to others and try to share with them the gospel that we've received. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord Jesus ascends to the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for us. In keeping with his command to make disciples of every nation, we lift up our world in prayer. For the church, that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that there may be a spirit of reverence and respect among people everywhere, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering the consequences of the current pandemic, may God grant them health, strength, comfort, and compassion as they continue through recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel alone and isolated, May God console them and let them experience his presence in their homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may they ascend to glory with Christ our King. We pray in a special way for those who have died in service to our country and for Enrique Delgado. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Our Mass is being offered for the people of the parish and in memory of Emily Ellis. Now we pray for our own private intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all those intentions on our prayer line list, for all of those who ask us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of infinite glory, your Son is exalted at your right hand as he intercedes for us night and day. May he remain with us always as he awaits his glorious return. Through Christ our Lord. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Then sings my soul, my 
Savior God to be. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Then sings my soul. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, or by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to my Lord, 
Blessed at my right hand, alleluia. The Lord God said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, alleluia. Take your throne at my right hand while I make your enemies my footstool. The Lord God said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, alleluia. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. The Almighty God bless you, for on this very day His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. Amen. May He grant that as Christ, after His resurrection, was seen plainly by His disciples, so when He comes as judge, He may show Himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you who believe He is seated with the Father in His majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of His promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground burn through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.